Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this meeting to order the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for March the 5th, 2019. Will you rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Town Administrator, can I get the roll call, please? Commissioner Offenley. Present. Commissioner Braun? Here. Commissioner Pearson? Here. Commissioner Warnick? Here. Mayor Marion? Here. Let the record reflect that the entire elected body is in attendance. Thank you. Will you bow with me for a brief prayer, please? Father God, I come to you tonight on behalf of our citizens, on behalf of uh, this elected body, God. I ask that you provide a hedge of protection over us and our town, God. I ask that you please watch over our fire department, our EMS, our police service, as well as uh, the military that are serving here and overseas, God. Be with us as we're here tonight and as we leave here later this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Mr. Mayor, yes. can you just also have a moment of <clears throat> silence for Mary Jo? Absolutely. Thank you. Town Administrator. Okay, um, one of the things we want to do tonight is to update the public on the presentation that the town made um, last Tuesday at uh, the county council meeting um, that there was a subsequent newspaper article uh, regarding. Um, a lot of this should not come too much out of, of a surprise from people. Uh, to people because the Town of Rising Sun has been on this road of solving the water and sewer issues for many years. And if you recall in past meetings, we've always talked about the fact that the town had to invest a lot of money and investing a lot of money, they had a choice of either investing a lot of money that would give just enough water and sewer for the town and our residents would be stuck with very high sewer and water rates for the next 40 years because that's the life of our loan with USDA, or we could invest a little bit more money into the infrastructure and be able to get more water and sewer than what was needed in order to be able to bring more users into the system. And the, it's basically just a straightforward business concept that when you have a predetermined amount of money that you have to pay back for something, it just makes sense that the more people that are paying back on that debt reduces the amount of money that each person or each property owner would have to pay. So this is a road that was set forth. Um, I think it's important to say that there really isn't anybody in this room that was around when these issues first came to light in the early 1990s, late 1990s, and there's a variety of reasons why it lingered on over the years, but unfortunately, as the gatekeepers right now, the keepers of this community, it's this elected body, and basically the people here in the room today and the citizens today that are dealing with trying to resolve that. It's not something that we ask for, but it's something that we have to deal with. So what I'd like to do is go over um, the presentation that we made to the county council on Tuesday morning, and bear with me one second as I bring the program up. Sometimes this computer can act a little bit slow on this, so I apologize for that. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so what the town has to do going forward is all municipalities in the state of Maryland have uh, a couple obligations or things that the state requires you to do, and, and they all fall under the idea of thinking ahead about what your issues are in your community and how you are going to address them. And one of the ways that the state requires all municipalities to address this is through the adoption of a comprehensive plan and then also the adoption of a master sewer and water plan. And the comprehensive plan basically looks at all the issues that a town uh, might have to face, whether it be police protection, uh, traffic, uh, zoning, road systems. We have to look at a crystal ball and figure out how we're going to address those over a 10-year period. The master sewer and water plan is much more specific. And that is where you're supposed to look at where you see the need for water and sewer services in the future. And let me emphasize that water and sewer is the economic engine that makes towns like the town of Rising Sun be able to survive, whether you're in uh, Perryville, Northeast, Elkton, water and sewer is the economic engine that makes it all work. So a couple maps that I want to show you um, of what the town has been working to do is as part of our comprehensive plan, we have to develop what is called a designated growth area. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit closer. <coughs> and what you have here is the current incorporated limits of the town of Rising Sun. And so one of the things we are required to do is to come up with a growth area of where we expect the boundaries of the town of Rising Sun to potentially be. Now, the important thing here is that you're looking at a crystal ball. So when you look at the areas inside the green, that is not to suggest that in 10 years that's going to be the town of Rising Sun. What it is doing is, in order for anybody to be able to develop their land or get water and sewer from the town of Rising Sun, the state requires that to be in a long-range plan. And so we have no idea, we can't get it to an exact science of exactly where the growth is going to be, but we want to make sure we catch a realistic area so that if somebody has a need for water or sewer or wants to develop or wants to annex into the town, that it's covered in the designated growth area. So this is what the proposed designated growth area is for the town of Rising Sun. Then you back off this for a second, and as part of the designated growth area, we are supposed to set aside an annexation plan. And there's the growth area again that you see. Um, this is basically, the, for people looking at this on TV, this is basically 272 out here on the right-hand side where Calvert uh, Manor Nursing Home is at in the Rising Sun High School. And right here to the left is West Nottingham Academy. Um, and this straight line right here that you're going to see very often is actually Barnes Corner uh, Road. They're going out to 274. So in determining the growth area for the town, the next thing we have to do is say, well, how do we expect that growth to occur? And the state requires us to come up with basically a phasing of when we think the growth would occur. And although we're not required to put years behind it, generally speaking, the uh, cream color is, is a growth area one, and that's basically indicating that within uh, zero to three years, those areas might be annexed into the town of Rising Sun. The, uh, this, the next peach color here is growth area two, and that's typically four to six years estimated growth into the town of Rising Sun. And then phase three growth is generally looked at as six to 10 years or more than 10 years. And again, this is not an exact science. So what that means is if we're calling for an area to annex 
in the next zero to three years and someone that we thought wasn't going to annex until 10 years from now comes forward and says, I want to annex into the town, there's nothing stopping that annexation from taking place. This is just designed to try to show um, how the annexation might take place. Now, the other thing that's important to note here is that in all of the town's plans here, Everyone sitting on this board and everyone sitting on the planning commission, which basically were the people putting this plan together, they really enjoy the rural character of the Cecil County area and the town of Rising Sun. Many people, I mean, look, the, the population of the town of Rising Sun back in 2000 was estimated to be 1,700. By the time we got to 2010, over 1,100 people moved into the area. And I've said this before, that wasn't 1,100 people moving in over a 10-year period because the town was in a building and sewer uh, moratorium that did not allow any new construction after 2005. So essentially, the 1,100 people, a 65% population increase, occurred in a five-year period. That tells you that this is an attractive area that people want to be able to relocate to. So um, this is a very attractive area, and the town of Rising Sun wants to make sure that we do our part to maintain the rural character of the town of, or of, the town of Rising Sun and the Cecil County around it. And there's a couple ways we aim to do that. Even in our shown annexation areas, we will be creating what are called green belts and open space. And this is something that is above and beyond what the county does. And I'm going to revisit this in a moment. But what the town is proposing to do is these areas that could potentially want to annex in the future would be annexed under the same zoning that the county has set forth. And that's really a novel approach to doing this because in the state of Maryland, when a community says it wants to grow, it is not required to say what the zoning is going to be. All they do is generally say, this area we want to be residential, this area we want to be commercial. To, to, to put our commitment forward to the residents of Cecil County and the residents of this community, we are saying that we are going to commit to the very same building densities and intensities that Cecil County has developed over the years. So whatever the zoning is in Cecil County now, about 99% of it is going to be adopted as part of the town's comprehensive plan. And I'm going to show those uh, smaller areas where that's not going to hold true. So by putting these areas in green belts, we are basically saying that those green belt areas, trees cannot be removed. Streams and ponds can't be filled in, even if you had all the money in the world and the Army Corps of Engineers said you could do it. Our zoning code and our comprehensive plan is going to say that you can't do it because we want to maintain the rural character of the area. So that's what we're doing from a green belt standpoint. This is to some degree relatively consistent with what the, pl what the town talked about doing in 2005 under its previous, one of its previous comprehensive plans. And what I'm going to do here is brighten this up a little bit for you so you can see it more clearly. That is what the previous comp plan for the town of Rising Sun said they were going to do in 2005. And let's back up for a second and realize that comp plans are not an exact science, and that's why the state asks you to come in every once in a while and modify it. You can keep the very same growth areas, or for, for whatever reason, if there's a reason to change those growth areas and development areas, you can do that. So this is what the town of Rising Sun was thinking about in 2005. Here's Barnes Corner uh, Road here, um, and then up above Route 1 into this area. So there's some consistency in what the town was talking about doing. 
But the other thing, I want you to sort of make a mental snapshot of that image in terms of where these colors are at. Are at. And I'm going to explain to you why I want you to Calvin, keep one, track one of that. One second. Go back and show us the exact 2005 comp. That's what that is. That's, that, that whole thing is what it is. The code area is right here, is what the 2005 comp plan is. I have to be honest, there's two of us sitting in this, in this room that were on that board, and I don't remember us going that far down in 2005. It was. It was like that in 2011, too. It's just what's in the box, the white. It's not what's. It's the outside. It's not the white. It's the no, white it's, area is not the comp plan. It was the it's the color area. areas. Oh, you, right. It's the colored areas. It's the colored areas inside the white box. Yes. Okay. That was the that was the tier. That was the phase three. <coughs> so. Then when you look, when you take the 2005 comp plan off there and you look at what in 2004 Cecil County had an urban growth plan and under their urban growth plan, they were estimating growth from the town to go all the way out to Silmore Road on 273. So that's where the outer edge of the proposed growth area is matching the 2004 comp plan also, or uh, county's urban growth plan. And then if you look at the 1990 um, urban growth plan for Cecil County, at that time, Cecil County was projecting growth to extend all the way down past West Nottingham Academy down into that area. The reason for this is that in the newspaper article the other day, there were some positions that were made by the county, which is a reason why we went in to meet with them. There were a lot of uh, positions being put forward by county administration that quite frankly were factually not correct. And one of the things that was said to the town of Rising Sun is that the plans that we were talking about doing were inconsistent with Cecil County's comp plans dating all the way back to 1962. So I just showed you two examples here where the very documents that Cecil County has were showing growth reaches very similar to what we are talking about doing now. So that is the, the town's proposed annexation uh, areas that we're looking to do. Now the next thing we want to look at is when you annex these areas, you then have to talk about how you're going to provide water and sewer to those areas. So this is the current water plan for the town of Rising Sun, um, the one that's currently in place now. You can see there's projected water up the Route 1 corridor and some projected water coming down uh, 276. Um, ever since the town of Rising Sun completed, and even before it completed its water line, um, the town has been receiving interest from people outside of town limits for water and sewer. And I think it's important to note that what I said at the beginning, the best way to reduce the debt load on our residents is to get more users into the system. So when you look at that green area that I showed earlier and how it extends down, it's driven by entities and properties that have actually sent us written <coughs> and verbal requests to have water and sewer extended to those properties. And the reason why we are showing those properties in and showing growth areas is that by law, if we were to extend water and sewer, 
to someone and they chose, and this is very important, this is going to be an underlining theme throughout this presentation, if they chose to not want to annex into the town of Rising Sun, which is their right to do, and we still provide them with water and sewer, we are forced to charge them double the rate for water and sewer. And so it makes economic sense for anyone who would want the water and sewer to the, in turn then annex into the town of Rising Sun because in many cases the town tax is much less than what they would pay in the out of town rate for water and sewer. So again, we're not requiring anybody to annex in this situation. We're not requiring anybody to connect to the water and sewer. We're basically providing options for people that if they want to pursue it, there's options available for them to make it as economical as possible for them. So when you look at the service area requests that the town has, a big one that we have going on right now is out 273. And there were some comments made at the county level that the town of Rising Sun had no one interested. Um, the mayor in his presentation had even talked about the fact that we were concerned that individuals from the county were actually interjecting themselves in negotiations that we were having with interested people. And that is pretty damaging uh, to have that take place. That's really, you know, some direct interference that could have some, you know, negative impacts on not only the town of Rising Sun, but the region around Rising Sun. So when we did the presentation, we politely went in there and just presented this stuff, and we also blew up the letters that we've received from people that are interested in getting water uh, and sewer services from the town. And these are the ones that are out going east along 273. So when you look at that at a little bit more blown up value, we've all heard in the past the situation with southern states out at uh, 273 and Wilson Road where the correct legal term is that southern states allegedly contaminated the wells of 14 residential properties out there. We have been in discussions with southern states for many years about providing water to them. The key components in this agreement is that southern states will be paying for that water line out there. The residents of Rising Sun are not paying for it. Southern states is paying for it. And Along the way, Ramsey Ford, we're all familiar with Ramsey Ford, they have 10 acres of land directly across the street from their facility that is zoned business general. In other words, it, it, there's lots of things that can be built on there that would be a business that could provide jobs and provide economic opportunities. And so they are interested in getting the water and sewer because quite frankly, They've had discussions with gas stations, so forth and so on, that have said they're not going to touch the land with it being well and septic. There's no interest to it. As a matter of fact, there's issues of they have approached um, people in the past about opening other car dealerships there to have a healthy you know, area, economic opportunity for other car dealerships, but the car dealerships will not touch land that does not have water and sewer, public water and sewer services to it. And so they're looking to, to be able to develop this 10 acre land. Hold that for a second, I'm gonna double back to it. Plumpton Park Zoo has also expressed an interest. We all know how wonderful Plumpton Park Zoo is to the community and, and how great of a learning experience it is for families and kids. If they could get on water and sewer, that could help facilitate the care of the animals out there, but it can also give them the opportunity to expand upon their land of the zoo and the, and the wonderful features that they have out there. The other area that has popped up is an interest from the Cecil County School District to get water not only water and sewer not only to Calvert Elementary, but to get water and sewer to Rising Sun High School. Both facilities are operating with modulars. 
And although there, it's, it's up in the air as to whether or not there are overcrowding issues in those locations, if as things are rezoned and things are shifted around, the one thing that is evident is that Calvert Elementary and Rising Sun High School are limited on the expansion that they can do because the, a lot of their land is taken up by well and septic already. So if they wanted to put additions on the, on the locations, they can't. That especially holds true at Calvert Elementary School. The other property in question out here is Calvert Manor Nursing Home. And Cal Calvert Manor Nursing Home is another one that sent us a written request to get water and sewer because, again, they have a large area that is taken up by well and septic. And let me give you some ideas of how much they use. They use about 250,000 gallons a month of water to provide services for the, the elderly and the senior and the uh, disabled that are out at those facilities. If they, they have said that if they could get off well and septic, they could build additions on that building and they would like to, to add more beds. Here's another interesting, we talk about trickle down economics. Calvert Manor provides over 200 jobs to this region. There's probably many people that are going to be watching this on TV that are employed by Calvert Manor. Being able to put another 50 beds, another 70 beds, another 100 beds, whatever it is, provides more economic opportunity in the way of good paying jobs and opportunities. So getting water and sewer out to them is a benefit to Calvert Manor. I already discussed <coughs> Rising Sun High School, but there are some areas out there that have some residential wells that were contaminated by gasoline many years ago, and they still have some issues with petroleum uh, uh, chemicals or petroleum, petroleum products still being found in their water, and they have to spend a lot of money with uh, uh, filters, so forth and so on, uh, to try to get rid of that. So the request for services are not just uh, regulated to going east of the, of the town of Rising Sun. Here's one thing I want to stop and say. This is very important to highlight, too. Remember when I talked about the growth area, all being within the green area of, um, within the green areas? There, is, there are some comments being made to property owners out on the 273 corridor that are saying that we are going to require them to connect to the water and sewer, which we are not. They are not town properties. They are county properties. They are not required to connect to the water and sewer. And there's another misnomer being spread that we are going to force them to annex. If you will see here, that green area is essentially hugging the shoulder of 273. So our comp plan is not set up for any of those properties to annex into the town of Rising Sun. It doesn't mean down the road that if one of those properties wanted to annex, we would just have to go through a couple month process of amending our comprehensive <coughs> plan. If you can see, the growth area we are showing is areas that have sent us letters requesting the service. So we're not even <coughs> showing a map that is showing property owners out there having to connect or having to annex into the town of Rising Sun. The other areas that we're getting are areas going to the north of Rising Sun. We have a couple going up Red Pump Road all the way to the Pennsylvania line. And then we also have some going out the Route 1 corridor up along the Pennsylvania line of um, entities that are looking to get on to water and sewer. The interesting thing about the Route 1 corridor is those are some big properties out there that could have some big businesses. Maybe they're businesses that would provide 25 jobs, 25 good paying jobs, 50 good paying jobs. The one thing that is holding them back is that when they are on well and septic, they do not have the water capacity to put the required fire sprinkler systems in. And so they are compromised at what they can build out there because they do not have public water and sewer out at those locations. So those are requests. These blue areas represent requests in that direction. 
And then we also had some requests going south of the town of Rising Sun. We have one um, that we've been in discussions with Rising Sun Elementary School and West Nottingham Academy and also the Hunter Sail Barn. Let's look at the Hunter Sail Barn first. We all are very familiar with the Hunter Sail Barn, but the property owner has talked about wanting to go on to the next chapter of life and wants to sell the Hunter Sail Barn and wants to realize the financial opportunities. He has had discussions with realtors that have said you are in the ideal location given the pending opening of the Great Wolf Lodge for you to be able to put a good restaurant down there or some other feature that could really prosper as, as part of the benefits of the Great Wolf Lodge. But they're severely handcuffed in being able to do that without the presence of water and sewer at that location. West Nottingham Academy is another entity that is a, it's basically a business and they have overhead and they have costs and those costs are projected onto the students that go there, the children that go there. And they, are, they have struggled over the years with water and sewer issues and having to spend large sums of money to correct those issues, but to also continue the annual maintenance. And so a position that a facility like that would say is that, well, if we're already going to be spending fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 plus a year at trying to keep everything within the operating standards, why not just have a water and sewer bill with the town of Rising Sun that would be much lower and would be less wear and tear on their equipment? So they are a business that is looking to improve their economic position also. Um, the Rising Sun Elementary School is another one that we have uh, received. Um, we've had some verbal conversations with them regarding um, connections in the future. And the interesting thing about the Rising Sun Elementary School is that the town of Rising Sun recently was made aware of a grant program through the United States Department of Agriculture. And originally we were told that the grant application was for up to $500,000. We have since been told that the grant application is creeping up towards a million dollars. And the, the purpose behind the grant is to take water to locations that struggle to provide water quality. And depending upon who you talk to, there are people who have varying degrees of opinions about the situations at the Rising Sun Elementary School. So the town of Rising Sun is in a position to be able to provide that service for them at no cost to anybody. This is a 100% zero matching grant from the federal government that we could qualify for. So we submitted that application to the Maryland Department of Planning, which is part of the requirements. And when Cecil County reviewed it, they objected to water being extended to that location because they deemed it as an area that is in what is called a rural conservation area and that no water can be extended to those areas unless there is a life, uh, life safety issue. Now, we can all have our opinions about whether or not there are life safety issues out there. That's for other people to determine. But we've also been notified in conversations with the Cecil County Health Department that high, the water quality issues that they have had out there might not rise to the level where the health department would say that water has to be extended to that location. But the thing that's frustrating, and I used this last night in a presentation, the town of Rising Sun is just trying to figure out what sheet of music we're supposed to play by. And we think we're playing by the right sheet of music, and then it changes on us. So here's an example of one of the changes. We applied for the grant to go out to Rising Sun Elementary School. The county said that it's not an area designated for water, but in the very same comprehensive plan that the county cited that no water 
can go to this location unless it's a life safety issue. There's a map at the back of their document that projects the water service areas around the town of Rising Sun. And if you see this powder blue down here, it says that water would be extended to the area in about six years. Well, if you look here, the Rising Sun Elementary School is right in that location. So again, the sheet of music changes on us, and we're wondering, well, what are we supposed to do with this? The other thing is that in our presentation, it was suggested by county administration that the town is fabricating these maps that I am showing you, especially the comprehensive plan. And if you remember, I asked you to take a mental snapshot of that comprehensive plan. And if you notice that the county has basically drawn a water service area that looks remarkably just like our 2005 comprehensive plan. It matches it identically. And so I'm just leaving that out there, that if we fabricated the map, then how does their map reflect what we are also showing there? So it's another one of those that makes you say, why is the sheet of music changing? The next one that is relatively simple here is the, uh, the sewer plan. Wherever you're going to serve water, we're also looking at potentially serving sewer. Again, you have another example of a county map that shows the Rising Sun Elementary being in a situation where they project it would get sewer in six to 10 years. But again, we were denied uh, the ability to do that. So the other thing that I wanted to point out at this point is that in the newspaper, it suggested that the town of Rising Sun did not submit its paperwork in a timely manner. The frustrating thing about that is in order to update your master sewer and water plan, you have to update your comprehensive plan. Because when the reviewing agencies look at it, they want to review the master sewer and water plan based upon what you called for in your comprehensive plan. So remember where I showed you got to show things in the growth area? There was no way for us to update our master sewer and water plan when we didn't have our growth area defined. And the county was made well aware of that a while ago. The county has been kept in the loop of all of our discussions. The mayor has had a lot of discussions with the county administration and even sent a letter to the county administration back in 2017 talking about what our intentions were, how much uh, uh, gallons of water we were going to have available, and who the interested parties were. But leading up to our presentation last Tuesday, it was conveyed to us that we, the mayor especially, was basically being called a liar. And speaking of half-truths, because the county never knew anything about any of these plans. So you can start to understand why we went to this county meeting in the manner that we did, because we don't want our town or our residents to be disparaged in that manner. So the last two things I want to show you is how we are projecting to use the land in and around the town of Rising Sun. And I talked about this at the beginning. There's no one sitting in this room who wants to change the character of Cecil County. And if you subscribe to the notion that Cecil County has already determined what that character is going to be by its zoning code, and if we are going to adopt the very same zoning code, then one would have to venture to come to the conclusion that the end result is the character is not going to change any more than what the county forefathers set forth in their zoning code. And so when you look at how we propose to use the land, we had to create color polygons, basically, of how the zoning is going to look in and around the town of Rising Sun. And when you compare that to the county's zoning map, which you can get off of Cecil Maps, their zoning map is on there, and you overlay it, the difference between this map and the one I just showed you is the program that I am using 
does not give me the ability to show what is zoned rural residential as blue hash marks in it. So in order to match that, I had to create basically a solid blue color. But my point is, if you look anywhere on that map where you see the oranges, where you see the blue, and if I click this on and off, you're going to see that we are matching it. We are matching what they set forth in the area. So again, we're not looking to change the rural character of the area. Now, I talked earlier about us adopting roughly 99%. Where we are making some changes is right around the town of Rising Sun itself. And the reason why we are suggesting those changes is because we think in many areas that the recommended zoning is too dense for what is good for the town of Rising Sun. So on this map, what I'm showing here, and I apologize, the system's running a little slow, is where you see green color, we are looking to lower the intensity and lower the density, which means fewer houses on the land and less intense businesses or uses being permitted on that land. Where we are showing the cream color is where we are looking to increase it. So a lot of these areas right adjacent to the town of Rising Sun, are currently zoned to allow four houses per acre. We are looking to knock that down to either one house per three acres, or in some cases, two houses per acre. Because at the end of the day, it's our traffic light at the intersection of 273 and 274 that's going to deal with that traffic. So we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot and have it too dense. The area, so you can see all the areas that we're looking to lower the density. People will still have plenty of opportunity to develop. They're just not going to be able to put 400 houses on 100 acres of land in round numbers, just to break it down that way. The areas that we are looking to increase are along the Route 1 corridor. We think there's a great opportunity to change the zoning up there to what we're calling an employment center. And we're looking to create financial incentives for developers who develop up there that would create good paying jobs, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year jobs, and would provide a density of jobs, maybe for every thousand square feet there's four employees. The point is we're looking to do the same thing the county does in enterprise zones, which is to drive that kind of commercial development to the Route One corridor. So I talked about preserving the rural character of the community. So here is our proposed land use. And I talked earlier about green belts and open space. When you look at preserving these areas, the town of Rising Sun is making efforts to preserve it even more than what the Cecil County Zoning Code does. We are designating areas as green belts, that basically you can run a road through that green belt, but you're not going to be able to cut the trees down. Now, this is the difference between what we're doing and what the county zoning code says. The county zoning code says that depending upon where you are at, 40 or 60 percent of the land has to be left open. But it doesn't say what portion of that land has to be left open. So what that meant is if a developer had 100 acres of ground and 20, 20 acres of it was just really bad ground that they couldn't build on, but they had 20 acres that were beautiful trees and uh, natural resources there, they could basically say, I'm going to leave the 20 acres of bad ground open under your code, and I'm going to cut down all the trees to build my houses. What we're doing is reversing that and saying that you can't, you, you can't chew up that natural resource like that you know, to just tear it down. So when you look at this, you can see there's a large area that the town of Rising Sun is doing its part to be a good steward of the rural nature of this area and to preserve it. And the last graphic that I want to show you is you've seen all of these colors here. When you look 
at the areas that are basically going to be able to be developed at a greater density, they are the areas that don't have any color in them. They are all in and around the town of Rising Sun. They are all areas that the county has already said can be developed at a greater density, but we are looking to reduce it. So the bottom line here, folks, is despite what you might be hearing, the town of Rising Sun is not making people annex. The town of Rising Sun is not making people connect to the water and sewer. The town of Rising Sun is not looking to turn this area into concrete and roads and our shopping malls, that's not what we're looking to do. We're looking to be a resource for people who need water. If they have failing wells, we want to be the one that has the ability to provide it, not artesian. Cecil County has sold its water rights to artesian. So this exercise is to make sure that artesian, a for-profit entity, does not get to come up into our backyard and see all that development happen in the town of Rising Sun be left out in the cold and not be able to sell its water and sewer. So we are looking to stake our service area to say this is ours and we can serve it. So if anybody has failing well, failing septic, we can serve it, not the for-profit entity. Um, so I know that's a lot of information, but we think it's very important that people hear that perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, over the past 12 years, we have worked and, and seen the town change uh, with new infrastructure. Um, none of us were here uh, when the town went through periods where um, you know, there was no growth, where we, didn't, we knew we had infrastructure issues and uh, we didn't fix them at that time. Uh, nobody on this board was here at that time. Um, I just simply think that you know, the county uh, initially came up with reasons as to why uh, they were in favor of this plan. Uh, and during the meeting uh, with the county uh, council and the county executive, uh, we kind of debunked um, most of those reasons. Um, some of them were simply you didn't inform us, which we showed a letter from 2017 that I had sent the administration notifying them before we had any water infrastructure <coughs> on the ground that we intended to uh, sell water. Um, following that, uh, we also heard that there were not many people or anyone, had, as a matter of fact, interested in purchasing water from the town. Uh, again, that was debunked. Um, so now simply the answer that I'm getting is that they are not in favor of development around the town of Rising Sun. Um, I've been very supportive, and I know our town board has been very supportive uh, for the growth around the Route 40 and 95 corridor. Um, but we're going to have to see growth up here as well uh, in the town of Rising Sun. Uh, that's going to take uh, the county working with the town and the town working with the county. Um, and right now, I'm saddened to say that uh, we are at a negative place right now uh, with the county. Um, I'm hoping they will come around. I'm hoping that they will work with us. Uh, we gave this presentation in hopes that we could sit down and potentially negotiate a position. Um, for me, this is hard because we've worked super hard to uh, build a state-of-the-art sewer plant uh, to get this water line in the ground and up and running. Uh, and we know we have parties that are interested in purchasing water from us. Um, so the road ahead is going to be tough. And I know that this town board is going to, we're going to stick together and continue to try to work with the county um, because the town of Rising Sun has to grow. No one should be saddled with uh, water and sewer rates that um, are super high and continue to go up. Um, we want to see development in the town, but we also want to keep our small town feel. Um, and I think that that's the position that not only I have, but also our town board has. Uh, so moving forward uh, into uh, citizens' Mayor, input. Yes. Mayor, and, and I apologize for this. There's the, the best map of all that we have I passed over. And I think it's very important that drives home the point, and I apologize. Um, remember we were talking about the growth area, and if one were to subscribe to the idea that the town should be able to grow like all the other towns do and to annex, and if one proposes or subscribes to the idea that the town should be able to move its water and sewer, the county has what is called a rural legacy area, 
And the rural legacy area up through July of this year existed in these areas right here. And you can see that it's, it's going into areas, encroaching upon areas that we previously had a growth area before. And it, it's a little irritating that they got up into that area. And then in July of this year, another expansion of rural legacy was done. And now, as you can start to see, we're getting surrounded. But the rural legacy is not the biggest concern because rural legacy is voluntary. It does not require farmers to do anything. And we don't have any objection to the rural legacy. The concern that we have is that we are being told that no water and sewer can be extended into any area that is rural conservation. So remember what I said about your zoning. If you're a county resident, you think you could build one house for three acres, and you got 50 acres that you want to develop. You're going to have a hard time doing that when the county has created a priority preservation area it looks like that. It just swallows the town of Rising Sun. And that means wherever there is property in that red area, no water and sewer can be extended to that area. That is why the county administration is blocking us from being able to sell any water and sewer. I'm sorry, when I look at that, it just feels like it's taken landowners' rights and sort of twisted them around a little bit. And so we're, we are trying to get the message out. This is not just a rising sun issue. This is the greater region of rising sun, and we just don't think a lot of residents realize that. This, this rural conservation, by definition, is supposed to be applied on farmland and rural areas. Anybody looking at this map knows that there might be somebody looking at it now who lives on a one-acre piece of ground that has a house on it. Guess what? You're in rural conservation. There are large areas that are already developed with single-family homes on them. And this, this blanket has just been laid over just about everything. So that's why we are concerned. That's the driving message that we're trying to get out there. Dylan, can Thank I you. just say one thing on this? If you look at the Maryland... Uh, maps and all and the legislation that was put through it clearly says that if you're in rural legacy and you answer yes to that your your property becomes a tier four property and if anybody has any questions look up what the restrictions are on tier four properties that's that's all the only thing that I would add is that's close to 100 square miles of land surrounding the town. Uh, and Rising Sun is the only community in Cecil County that uh, you see that happening. Um, we uh, are not of the mindset that we want to force people to connect to us. We are not of the mindset that we want to force anyone to annex. Uh, what we all believe is that this should be the property owner's choice. If you want to continue to farm your land, we are an agricultural community. Uh, we were built that way. Uh, but you should also have the right to develop that land if you want to. Um, and with the infrastructure and the ground, obviously your property is going to be worth more money. Um, and uh, we want to see this, um, our ability and, and Cecil County's property rights um, to be on the property owners themselves, to be able to make that choice. I'll even go a step further and say we can't legally force anybody to annex in. All right, moving into citizens input. Thank you, town administrator. Uh, Ms. Thompson. I would like, can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. I would like to take this opportunity to speak to the town of Rising Sun. Mayor, Mr. Bomberger, commissioners, ladies and gentlemen, Good evening. My name is Mary Ann Thompson, and my family and I own the McDonald Farm at 360 Biggs Highway. My husband and brother are retired auto workers, and I am a retired teacher from the Delaware school system. My family has 
owned the property for 35 years where we have raised crops and boarded horses among other things. Like most farmers in Cecil County, we've had our ups and our downs, but we've managed to get by. Unfortunately, looking into the near future, we are scaling back our activities due to age and fatigue. We are simply not capable of doing what we once did, though it breaks our hearts to concede that. Our property borders the Rising Sun town limits and is not connected to town water or sewer. We have discussed developing our property in some way so that we can afford to retire and live out our life with some comfort and peace. Any discussions we've ha had has ended because we've been told we are limited by the Cecil County Zoning Ordinance and what we can do with our property. We have met with the administration of Rising Sun and we are interested in having the ability to connect to public water and sewer. We understand that the purpose of the Northern Agricultural Residential District is to preserve the royal character of the county by encouraging agricultural use. As lifelong farmers, we think that such purposes are noble and necessary. However, we feel that our situation is unique for a, very, for a variety of reasons. First, we share a contiguous border with the town of Rising Sun. In order for there to be any growth of the town in the future, our property is the lin linchpin for unlocking the potential growth of the town. <clears throat> we have 94 acres of land that could easily be developed for a multitude of residential commercial or institutional uses to benefit the community in a cohesive manner and not force those uses to be spread to other farms that are, that are more rural and further away from the town center. Second, our property is on Joseph Biggs Highway, which is one of the two main thoroughfares into the town center. It is a well-maintained highway with wide shoulders and well-marked travel lanes. It is easily ca capable of absorbing any grade of traffic that would result in development <clears throat> of our property. Moreover, there are no traffic signals within three quarters of a mile or so. There would be no issues with stacking and coordination of traffic signals. Three, the southern side of Biggs Highway is already a mixed use with both residential and commercial uses. There is precise performance, the community fire department with the very busy Rising Sun <coughs> Banquet Hall and Alpha Branding Solutions along with our farm and two single family homes. Any type of commercial or higher density residential development would fit in with the overall neighborhood and would be a benefit to the greater Rising Sun community. In summary, we would be in favor of working with the town commissioners of Rising Sun and county commissioners to develop a plan to expand municipal services and amend the county's zoning ordinance to allow for the responsible growth of the town as long as the end results allows us as the opportunity for the reasonable development of our property. Sincerely, Mary Ann Thompson. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Would anyone else like to speak this evening? All right. We're going to move forward, Ms. Wagner. <coughs> you don't have to stay. If you don't want to, you don't have to stay. You want seconds, Patty, to catch up to you. Okay. As you can see. Which book you started with, Patty? It's only not the one. big one. Just the one. The big one is July through November. So I put the one we're going to discuss in the little book. So you wouldn't have to get confused. How's that sound? <laughs> Wait for which one do you want to do first? The do government. I would do the government first. Okay. Hmm. All right. Everybody ready? So um, the second page is your report, which Calvin's already skipped. So we're going to go to page three, which is the statement of net position. Cash and cash equivalent is $339,842.67. Investments are $89,454.33. Uh, 
receivables, and most of this is the real estate tax receivables, is $493,051.47. Amount due from other governments is $19,118. Amount due from other funds, which is the proprietary, is $562,857.66. Other receivables of the $19,005.45. The restricted cash and cash equivalent is $3,409.67 for a total assets of $1,526,739.25. There's something I would like to recommend, and Calvin doesn't even know this yet. Um, we have some investments. We have some bonds, stocks. Yep sitting in a box over at Howard Bank. It would be nice if we could get them together and put them with one investment company. And the main reason is, is every once in a while we get a letter saying we have some dividends that are getting ready to go to the state because we've lost the dividends long ago, back before the accounting has gotten situated. So it would be nice if we could get them all together and make better use of those investments. I know the, the auditors broker. would love that. Mm -hmm. Maybe like put them with a broker or something. Yeah, like with a broker concept. would be nice. Yeah. You know, so we have Maybe one little statement that we could give to the auditor and said this is what it's worth, rather than us trying to guess it through. <clears throat> but that's just my recommendation as one of these came up. Accounts payable and accrued expenditures, and this is basically payroll liabilities, $860.75. <laughs> for unrestricted assets of $1,525,878.50. Any questions about the statement of net position? And for those of you who are new and haven't looked at it before, there are no fixed assets on the government. We have lots of fixed assets, but they're not on here because governmental accounting does not record fixed assets. The total revenue is $1,617,141.95, and the expenditures for the first six months is $747,943.65 My eyes are tired today. $943.65 for a positive um, income over expenditures of $869,198.30. And for those of you who haven't been here before, obviously we have to make that revenue because the real estate taxes were all accrued in July, and that's why the receivable is so high. We have to make that money last till through the six months. Any questions with regard to that? Now we're going to go to the page you all like, which is Budget to actual, which is page eight. And I'll give Calvin a minute to get there. Okay. So we have collected $91,026.39 more than we had budgeted. And the majority of that revenue is in charges for services. The expenditures are running $149,404.21 less than what we budgeted, and the majority of that happens to be in um, <clears throat> salaries and wages because we had a delay in hiring some of the new employees that we had budgeted for. Um, for that we are positive Budget to actual by $240,430.60. Any questions? Okay, so you're going to go past your blue tab, which is the proprietary, and you're going to go to page three. Cash and cash equivalent in the proprietary is $1,355,787.64. <clears throat> Service charge receivable is $324,394.70. Amount due from other funds is $273,957.98. And basically, you're going to find an offsetting number 
which has to do with the do to and do from between water and sewer. And then do from other, gover from other governments is $236,956 for current assets of $2,191,096.32, $70,688.38 is restricted, and net capital assets, which is all the assets minus all the depreciation, is $26,299. $26,299,383.35 for total assets of $28,561,168.05. Any question? Okay. Then we got the amounts due to other governments, which is our current liabilities of $869,549.05. We have the long-term debt, which is basically the water tank and the sewer plant that we just upgraded of $20,827,830.75. Accrued compensation is $20,003.64. And then we have the Southern State escrow of $10,000. We have net investment and in capital assets, which is basically your <coughs> net assets less the mortgages that we have for the water and sewer. And that's $5,471,552.60 for unrestricted funds of $1,362,232.01. If anybody is wondering why unrestricted is in the negative, is because as we were paying out for the water project, we were paying ahead of the money coming back to us. So when all that gets straightened out, which probably has happened by now, but it hadn't happened in December, that negative number should go positive. For the total revenue of charges for services for the first six months is $700,236.56. And then we have the tower that we rent, $10,950.30. We have total expenditures of $987,012.81 for a negative loss of $275,825.95. And if you were, then you add in non-operating income and expenditures for a negative of $105,744.65. So the change in net position, which is like negative income, is $381,570.60. It's not negative cash flow because obviously we would have to add the depreciation back in, which is $439,345.52. This kind of supports we really need to expand water and sewer to cover the expenditures that we have incurred by having the increased water and sewer. Um, if we go to page eight, we are charges for services is higher by the budget by $95,109.85. And the expenditures are under by budget by $228,802.32. Two hundred thousand of that happens to be depreciation. So if you take out the depreciation, we're only good by one hundred and twenty-three thousand. And then we have the connection and improvement charges, which basically is running higher because we did have the dollar store right annexed in, and that's um, thirty-one thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and thirty-one cents. And then we have an interest investment income of $3,349.75. The interest expense is under budget by $40,760.52. So we are positive to the budget by $336,385.13, but $200,000 of that is depreciation, which is a non-cash item. Any questions? I think... That was my fastest. As you know, I have an open door policy. If you all have any 
<clears throat> questions, just please come see me. Sure. Sorry to interrupt, but I want to shoot this down to Patty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I do have some property up the 276 line. Okay. Quarter. I have a four acre parcel that would love to have water and sewer. Okay. Just off the of 276, I have a 30 acre commercial site also that would definitely, okay. that I'd love to have water and sewer. Um, I'll follow that up with I could not afford to pay to have the water and sewer ran that way. But I would love to hook into it and pay to hook up these. So just well, just to let everybody know, it's uh, it's a, it's and great well, to, well before Hunter Sale Barn. Right. So, like I said, I think the biggest thing is we want to make this uh, property owner's choice whether they Correct. decide to do this or not. Yeah. Um, if they uh, so need and want to develop that property, then that should be their right. If they don't want to, then yeah. Obviously, that's their right as well. Why don't you write, write us a letter to that effect so we could put it in our file that we have with all the information to present to the county, and at some time we might want to use it. Okay. Okay? I can do that. Tiny. Thank you. Thank you. Town Administrator, any report? No? Uh, I'm tired. Please see you. <coughs> Take care, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Alan. See you, Ron. Many times I've gone through this thing. Tell me. The well, that's right, the small one. That's Josh. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, during the last month period, and I can't recall when we had a meeting last, so I'm trying to cover a, a wide range of area. Um, we haven't had any significant trends that I could talk about. However, um, on January 30th, we did have an arrest that pretty much affected the area. Um, <coughs> many of the commissioners probably received complaints about uh, drug sales and drug dealing along Mountain Road, which is just west of the town limits. Um, we happened to stop a vehicle along Route 1 and seized over a hundred and some packets of heroin that resulted in us going to some houses along Mountain Road and made multiple arrests. I believe in one night we made four and another day we made two additional arrests which has stymied the, uh, the drug activity on Mountain Road. Um, I, I know we had received numerous calls for that and yes it's outside of our jurisdiction but when it involves drug activity um, that begins in the town, the state laws allow us to follow that activity to wherever it goes. Um, secondly, it's that time of year, it's that time again, I can't say time of year, but as you all, the board knows that ballistic vests worn by the law enforcement officers have a service period. We're closing in on the end of our service period for some of the officers' vests. Um, therefore, I wrote a grant through Governor's Office of Crime Control and Prevention, and hopefully we'll get an award to replace most of those uh, that are closing in on those uh, expirations. Um, lastly, our search for additional law enforcement officers we uh, were able to hire another officer. Um, his start date was yesterday. The gentleman's name is uh, uh, Stefan Josie Davis. Um, he is a certified Maryland police officer, and I think he's going to be an asset to this town. He's a very likable gentleman, just like you know Elijah was. Um, but I think he's going to do great things in this town and hopefully within the next few weeks we can get him outfitted in, in a uniform and out on the street with uh, the seasoned officer. That is the uh, end of my report unless there's questions. Chief, give them an update on our situation with uniforms. Um, we're still searching. The, the And it just doesn't affect us. It goes... Uh, uh, beyond the mid-Atlantic region. Um, you have agencies as large as the Maryland Transportation Authority Police and Delaware State Police with far reaching down into PG County and so forth that are affected by the fact that 
a, the uniform maker that we had, Red Detailer, was bought out by a larger company, which was Gauls. Um, uh, Gauls is a, an equipment for first responders um, distributor. They decided to not do custom uniforms anymore. And what I say is custom is if you had noticed, many of the law enforcement agencies have a different <coughs> uniform, and they are tailored to that agency specific. Um, the uniform that we have, there may be another agency that has it, but not the state of Maryland. Um, I believe one in Pennsylvania, one in New Jersey has the same exact uniform. But Gauls decided that they were no longer going to make these types of uniforms. Um, so we're looking for replacements, and uh, it's pretty much been a scramble amongst law enforcement agencies around the state and around this region to try to find someone that can replicate what we have. And in the event that we cannot replicate them, we're going to end up going to something else, um, which will change the look of the department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My report is brief tonight. Uh, I did serve as principal for a day at Rising Sun Elementary School. Uh, I had a wonderful time doing that. Uh, definitely opened my eyes to uh, some of the needs uh, that Rising Sun Elementary School uh, is facing. Uh, it is the largest uh, by population elementary school in the county. Um, they actually have more population at Rising Sun Elementary School than some of the middle and high schools. Um, so to Hear some of the challenges that they face and how they are working and getting creative. Uh, it was amazing to spend the day there. Uh, in addition, uh, I uh, represented the town at the uh, celebration of life for Mayor Joe Jablonski. Uh, definitely a loss for the town of Elton. Uh, we sent our condolences to uh, the council and Mayor Alt, as well as the Jablonski family uh, and friends. Uh, she was definitely uh, the heart of Elkton uh, and worked very, very hard for uh, the citizens <coughs> there. Um, so they are still in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, I also agreed to um, an arrest warrant for a charity for the Cecil County uh, Victims um, Services Homicide Memorial, which they are going to be building in Elkton. The chief had a wonderful time handcuffing me, and I found out that those handcuffs are not very comfortable. So. Um, They're also not cleaned, are they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, You've never so, cleaned them, have you? Um, I'm excited to do that as well, and uh, through donations from uh, people throughout the county, uh, it was actually my bail was made at $500, over $500, uh, in less than four hours. So I thank everyone that took the time to donate, uh, and I'll certainly share pictures of that memorial once it is built. Uh, moving forward into Commissioner Comments, Commissioner Authenry. Um, first off, I want to thank Ron Thomas and our public works guys for all the salting and plowing they've done this year with one hand and all the water leaks they've had to work on with the other hand at the same time. They've definitely had their hands full and we're not out of the woods yet. So also thank you to the town staff, Judy, Dina, Linda, Calvin. Uh, they've taken a lot of abuse from residents who've called up here angry about things and um, they've handled it very professionally so Calvin thank you and the town staff for that uh, the other thing I just want to remind everybody if you're watching on our video when you get your water bills there's information in there each month please don't just throw it away read it especially one about what you can put in the trash because this year our trash uh, bill was, our contract went very high so be careful what you put in there because we get charged back if they're not recyclables um, so please look at those each month because they take the time to put important information in there for us. Uh, that's all I got tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Offenry. Commissioner Braun. Oh, uh, yes. After many months working on the maps that ought to be included in the comprehensive plan, the <coughs> Planning and Zoning Board finally last night was able to vote on it, and it's being sent to the clearinghouse, the Maryland Clearinghouse. Uh, we expect to set a public hearing sometime early May with regard to that comprehensive plan. Dave Dahlstrom was from the Maryland Department of Zoning and Planning was very helpful in 
uh, helpful to us getting this plan together. And also our town administrator, Calvin Bonnenberger, did an awful lot of work with us during all the se sessions and he also spent many hours in the office working on the maps that accompany the comprehensive plan. And I thank you, Calvin, for your assistance. It was great. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for that report, Commissioner Braun. Commissioner Pearson. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for the help. One of the first responders to breakfast. Uh, our sponsors, Food Group, group. Uh, Shepherd Design, and Martins uh, for their donations. Um, the uncooked food was intended to go to uh, Ray of Hope, but I found out that James would be the uh, hosting the homeless shelter for that week, and because of the inclement <clears throat> weather that came. Uh, I decided to give them the uh, breakfast foods so that the homeless would have, have that. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Commissioner Pearson. Commissioner Warnick. So I've been uh, out of town for the last two weeks, but um, on that note, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Rothenreath for uh, representing me so well at the Eagle Scout ceremony. It was. Uh, and Commissioner Braun. And Commissioner Braun was there. I. I um, I mean, th those three projects were really important to me in the town, and I really wish I could have been there, but uh, I knew that, you know, it was in good hands with Commissioner Rothery. So um, on March 16th, we have uh, this year's Cabin Fever at Moore's Chapel. Uh, that's a great event. It's all of the kind of outdoor activities, uh, really in the county, not just the town. So uh, County Parks and Rec will be there. Uh, actually, even like Newark Parks and Rec, most of the towns have their parks and rec. There's uh, different organizations of like fishing organizations and uh, Maryland Department of Natural Resources. And so it's a great event to go out and kind of see the upcoming um, spring events. activities and, and uh, organizations that are out there for, you know, everybody's getting sick of winter and the spring's right around the corner and you can kind of kind of see what you want to do right before spring hits. So. Um, it's a great event. It's uh, the town's participated in it for a number of years now, and uh, so we'll be there again this year. Um, and then uh, we have our uh, park cleanup planning. So uh, Rupert and I have settled in on the date of April 27th for a cleanup event, and uh, we have not decided on which park yet. So it'll probably either be between. Uh, Veterans Park or the dog park. I'm not quite sure which one. I gotta kind of get out and see which one needs it more. Um, we may do some invasive removals over at Veterans Park. Uh, I know we have that there, and then th I think there's a little more trash over there, so we might might focus on that one this year. But um, that's pretty much what we have right now. If the ground ever dries out enough, which you know we never got through it last year, but if the ground does dry out, we'll try and get some of those drainage areas fixed. Uh, over at Veterans Park and try and clean that mess up a little bit. So, and that is my report. Thank, Thank you, you, Commissioner Warnick. Upcoming meetings, the Planning Commission will meet on Monday, March 18th. Uh, the next town meeting is obviously Tuesday, March the 12th. Uh, and then we actually have another town meeting on March 26th. Uh, no upcoming events or holidays. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right. It's been moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>